So today I'm going to do an overview of linear regression in SAS using both PROG GLM and PROG GREG. Um, the data set I'm going to be working with, um, it's looking at um, various attributes of a house and the cost of the house uh, per 100,000. Um, yeah, so that would be like 520,000 rather than just 520. Um, so yeah, some of the different attributes are the city the house is in, whether it has multiple floors. Uh, city here has four uh, variables. I think it, yeah, it starts to show the other ones. It's a big data set. Um, and yeah, multi-floor, it's just yes or no. The age of the house, whether it's rural or not. Um, and the population of the neighborhood. Uh, so just to start with, um, I'm, I'm going to assume that uh, based on like the other video, you know how to do just some of the like preliminary stuff for uh, regression, just seeing if the variables are suitable. Um, but yeah, so just jumping right into it, um, for, with PROC GLM, um, you start out just naming the data set that you named, or whatever you named it. Um, Proc GLM has a class statement, so uh, we have a few uh, categorical variables. Um, so we have city, multi-floor, and rural. And we use a model statement where we start with the outcome and then we, we list all of the different variables that we want in there. So um, we have age, I'll start with the categorical ones. It's also age um, and hood pop. Um, for some reason, ProcGLM doesn't give the solutions automatically, like as far as like the model. You have to ask for it, which I think is kind of a flaw. Um, so yeah, if we just run that, we get uh, just some basic information about like the ANOVA table. Um, different, this, this information I'll use later on when I talk about model building. Um, and we get our information about the model. You'll see that some of these have dots, and that means that that's what SAS chose as the referent category. And you'll notice that for some reason, SAS picks by default the largest number as the referent. It picked four here, and it picked one in these other two scenarios, which again, I, I think is kind of a bad design just because almost invariably people choose zero as, as the referent. So if it's gonna if it's gonna automatically choose something, it should choose zero. But yeah, so I'm gonna go back and just show you how we can change the referent. Um, so if uh, yeah, for city, if we want like city one to be the referent, uh, we put ref equals uh, one. And this is one of those rare scenarios where even though it's a care, or sorry, even though it's a number, it needs to be in a quoted string. And uh, the only reason I'm calling it one is because uh, for city there is no zero otherwise I would have picked zero uh, so that's what I'm gonna do in this other case where multi-floor I'm gonna call the reference zero and same with uh, rural what went wrong there oh I didn't close the bracket Yeah. Um, so now the results are, uh, yeah, we have the reference we want where city one is the referent here and zero for multi-floor and zero for rural. And uh, as far as interpretation of these results, um, I, I'm going to do a video on linear regression. We can, you can learn about it there. Um, this video is more just about how to actually conduct the regression. Um, but yeah, we can see that some of this stuff is significant some of it's not um, something I'm going to do just because I you would usually decide whether to include an interaction term based on uh, prior knowledge 
I'm going to just do it because I, I know the data, so I know where there's going to be an interaction. So I'm going to create an interaction term between uh, city and um, hood pop. And you do that in GLM by uh, putting an asterisk between uh, the two variables you want to create an interaction for. Okay, so you can see that uh, many, well, all, all actually all of the levels of this interaction are significant, but uh, it's worth noting that let's just say only this one was and everything else had a p-value like of like 6, or, like, or sorry, 0.6, like anything above 0.05. Um, it only takes one level to be significant for you to keep the entire um, interaction term. Um, and yeah, just a little bit about model building. Uh, it's almost, it's always best to do it by hand, um, but the automated process I'm going to get to when I get to proc reg because that's where it's available. Um, but yeah, there's a few ways you can do it here. Backward selection is what I prefer, where um, we would start with the uh, least significant variable um, and in the case of these categorical variables how city has three uh, levels with th three here three levels that have coefficients and p-values uh, whatever its lowest one we consider that the p-value for that variable or I guess this one's the lowest one um, and yeah so we, we would kick out the variable that has the lowest um, or sorry the highest p-value the least significant p-value and it looks like that would be age. So our first step would be to kick out age and then redo the modeling process. Uh, an alternative um, is to use the uh, sum of squares. I, I don't really know um, the use of type one. Uh, type three is good. Type three is uh, the F value here is, is the partial F value for if um, this variable was the last one added. Um, and yeah, we're able to uh, use that to make decisions about what to remove. And that's the one you should use when you have an interaction term. I believe when you don't have an interaction term, you should be using uh, type two. I think, I guess type two is not there. I guess you gotta request it. Um, and yeah, so um, I guess just like quickly going over that process, like let's, let's kick age out and rerun it. Um, to do this right, we would have kept track of the coefficient of every other variable, and if removing age resulted in a change of more than like some value, like 20%, we would have had evidence that age is a confounder, and we would have kept it. Um, but yeah, just ignoring that, um, we pick the, ne the next highest value, which looks like it's multi-floor, uh, so we'd kick out multi-floor. Okay, things are getting more significant for sure. Uh, rural is looking like it, it would be next. Okay, and now, uh, although city here has the highest there, um, it's part of an interaction that, that has significance, so uh, we would keep it. And I think this would be our final model. I don't think there's anything more we can kick out. Um, so yeah, this is an overview of how you would do... Uh, oh yeah, and this, this is neat, where it shows the relationship between the cost of the house and hood pop varies by city. And this shows where like if there was no interaction present, then each of these lines would be parallel. Not necessarily laying over top of each other, but they'd all have the same slope. And the fact that they have a different slope, I have a video on interaction, you, you can watch if you want to know more about it, but um, yeah, the relationship between hood pop and cost is different among, depending on the city you're in. Um, and yeah, so now I'm going to talk about proc reg. Proc reg is definitely more archaic, and there's a few things you need to, to do. You'll notice here that we had a class statement with proc GLM, which is nice because it creates your um, dummy variables for you. Uh, but with proc reg, you, you need to create dummy variables. So uh, what I mean by that, um, so I'm going to do a data statement. Uh, um, 
and I'm just going to name it the same. I'm going to, this tells you we're creating a data set and set tells you the one we're working from. So the fact that my new one and old one has the same name means I'm just modifying that one. Um, so the fact that uh, multi-floor rural, multi -floor and rural have uh, two levels, it's a one or a zero, so they don't need any dummy variables. Um, it's SAS is going to be able to handle that with proc reg. City has three though, so we're going to have to create uh, some dummy variables for city. You always need to create uh, one fewer dummy variables than you have levels to a variable. Um, and since we have an interaction with city, we need to also create dummy variables for each of the levels of the interaction. Um, so I'm just going to go through that as painlessly as possible. So um, just to start with, uh, we're going to make city1 the reference, so we need to create a dummy variable for uh, city2, city3, and city4. Um, and in each case, uh, we want it to start being zero. We want it to be zero by default, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, and then next, um, you're going to, oh, also, yeah, you need to have colons each time. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see what that looks like just to start with. Yeah, so there's a zero all the time, um, and the reason we're doing that is, uh, well, actually, it'll make more sense in a second. Um, we're going to, to next do an if statement. So if our original city variable equals 2, then city 2 equals 1. Um, if city equals 3, then 3 equals 1. If city equals 4, then city 4 equals 1. And what we did here, um, we'll look, we'll, uh, so SAS now has everything it needs to understand what's going on here. So uh, right now city, it's city 1, and since um, city 2, city 3, and city 4, they're all equal to 0, so SAS would know that Oh, it must be the referent value. Where if we go to um, a time when it's city two, uh, now SAS um, would see, hey, city two is one, and these other the others are zero. So it must be this uh, city. It must be city two rather than the referent. Um, and like I said, we also need to create interaction terms. Um, so I'm going to uh, call it city two underscore hood uh, or I'm just gonna do that for the others but giving them a different name so three four um, and it's literally just um, city two times hood pop and uh, same all the way around might speed this up when I actually edit this video just because once you kind of know where I'm going with it there's no point in sitting through it but I also don't want to just skip it so I might just speed it up okay so now I think we have our we have both our uh, dummy variables and our interaction dummy variables. Um, so let's just make sure. Uh, it's easier to give the example when it's something other than city1. So when it's city2, um, city2 city, uh, has a value. Or yeah, city2 has a value, it's 1. And city2, like the interaction term, is whatever the uh, value is for hood multiplied by the value for city2, which in this case is 1. Um, so yeah, we have an interaction term. Um, and yeah, and that interaction term would cancel if um, it was the referent. Uh, so once it's city1, there's nothing to... Well, there's both no city1 and no interaction term, so uh, yeah.
Again, if that's kind of foggy, I have a video on interaction that might make it a bit more clear. Um, so now we are ready for proc rag. That old dusty fossil of a proc. It has some advantages though. It can do some stuff that proc GLM can't, like like a variance inflation factor. And also, it, it I'm pretty sure if you're doing logistic regression, or not, sorry, yeah, obviously you can't do logistic regression, but um, the archaic version for logistic is proc logistic, and I think that gives you odds ratios right away, rather than with uh, proc GLM where it doesn't. But I digress. Um, okay, so proc proc reg data equals linear. Um, yeah, we don't need a class statement, or we can't have a class statement. Uh, cost is the outcome equals uh, age and uh, hood pop are the easy ones. And then we have city two two and city four. Um, and we also have these. Uh, interaction terms and yeah it gave us results it gave us our parameters um, I guess just uh, instead of taking my word for it, I'm, I'm literally just going to copy and paste that just to show you that it gave um, very similar, if not identical, results to a PROC GLM. Okay, so uh, with PROC GLM we had a intercept of 93, intercept of 90, oh it's more different than I was expecting. Um, City at a value of 89.9, 91. Yeah, they're, they're pretty similar. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, they're, they're similar. They're similar enough that um, you would get very similar, similar values. Um, but yeah, so I, I would use PROC GLM if you're, if you're undecided. Um, but yeah, I, uh, very very similar values. One city four. Twenty nine point three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So another thing I wanted to show you um, was automated selection. Um. So what we can do first of all, don't you probably shouldn't do automated selection. It, it's better to do it by hand because. Um, the algorithm is very robotic and can't make human decisions that it takes to um, decide to, like the subject matter it takes to decide to force a variable in and stuff like that and make, make different decisions about what constitutes a confounder. It's harder to automate that at this point in statistics technology, so it's better to, it's better to do it by hand, but um, if, you're, if you must automate, then I'll show you how. Um, so we would put uh, selection equals backwards. I kind of describe backwards elimination or backwards selection where um, you just remove the one with the lowest p or the highest p value, the one that's least significant. Um, the uh, criteria to um, keep a variable, I think by default, is 0.1, but you can change it to. Um, yeah, the significance for staying in the model. So you can you can call it something else if you want. Equals zero point. And I am expecting it to come up with a similar model that we did because there wasn't a lot of room for variability. What happened? Okay, I just misspelled it. Okay, so what's our final model? Okay, hood pop city and the hood pop city interaction. It's a band name if I've ever heard one. Uh, yeah, that that game came up with the exact same one. So, backwards selection was a good one. Um, yeah, we can also do forward. 
I think the rules are different, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna leave that in. Um, and it might come to the exact same answer. I would think it would. Uh, forward is. Oh, it didn't keep the interaction term that time. Okay. Um. All right. Wait. Yeah. No, it didn't. It it wait. Yeah, it kept one. Kept one. So that brings me to an important point. You can't. It it tried to do something that is not allowed, but I can. I can tell it not to do that. What it did is it kept one uh, value for. Oh. I'm not scrolling. I keep not scrolling far enough, but okay. Well, what, what the point still stands. Picture this is the final model it gave, where um, it kept one level of the interaction term when they come as a group. You can't you can't have just one. The same way you can't have just one level of city. You need to keep them all. You need to add them and remove them as a group. Um, so how we can tell SAS to do that is uh, we can do this. Um, and now it says, uh, t it, it knows that, um, they come as a team, basically. You can't keep one. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so, um, it, it recognizes that these are a group and we'll only kick them out as a group. Um. And yeah, one, one more thing you can do, um, let's just say age was a confounder, um, what you can do is, uh, one second, okay, you can say, um, include equals one, and, uh, it should force age into the model regardless of its significance. Uh, so let's see what it came up with. Yep, it forced age in and age is uh, not significant. So, nice. Um, I guess the, the last thing I can show you is uh, okay, wait, I'm just gonna Actually, well, yeah, I'm not doing a selection, so I'm just going to get rid of it just because it's cleaner. I don't like the way it looks. Um, you can do VIF, and that's the variance inflation factor. And what that is helpful for is um, determining... Okay, so yeah, well, yeah, that makes sense because he's... Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work well with, with multi-level variables like this where... Well, basically, it's it's measuring collinearity, and and obviously these are collinear; they're part of the same uh, part of the same variable. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's what variance inflation factor is useful for. Um, I didn't prepare to talk about that, so I I'm, I shouldn't have even brought it up. But but yeah, that's something you can do with proc reg. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm hoping to do a video on um, regression diagnostics, but hopefully that was useful.